Today you'll learn to master the gradient tool to create perfect gradients in Photoshop, all while understanding the two different gradient modes now available within the tool. There's gonna to be a lot covered here, so if you have a hard time remembering all of the steps, be sure to grab a copy of my free lesson cheat sheet for this tutorial, which I'll explain how to get at the end of this video. Now to create a gradient in Photoshop, the first thing you need to do is of course, activate the gradient tool by pressing G. You can also find it here in your toolbar. Once you have that tool active, you have two key options that you can choose from, either the gradient mode or the classic gradient mode. For the sake of example, to begin, I'm going to use the gradient mode. Now to create a gradient at the most basic level, all you need to do is click and drag out like so. Wherever you first clicked will define the starting point for the first color in your gradient. Wherever your cursor ends up will define the end point for your gradient and therefore your second color. In this case, letting go because we were in the gradient mode, which I'll explain the difference of in just a moment, you can see that we have the black color at the beginning where I first clicked and then the white color over here at the end where I left my cursor at the end of the gradient creation. The reason I have these two colors is because of what is defined up here within my gradient preview. If I click on this drop down menu, I can choose between a bunch of different options here, including updating the color like clicking on the blue one, for example. Although the colors have been updated, the same parameters still apply with the first color being defined by that first point and the second color being being defined by that second point. Now in between these two color points, we have this little diamond, and this indicates the transition point between our first and second color. If I click and drag on this diamond, you can see that one of the colors, depending on which way you move this midpoint, is going to become more dominant within the gradient. That's because you're shortening the transition distance between one color and the other. In this case, the blue color on the left is not fully transitioning until it hits this midpoint here, which is why it dominates the majority of our canvas. If you want a nice smooth gradient, I would recommend to leave your midpoint set to the middle for most cases like so. So now that you understand how a gradient is created, there are a bunch of different types of gradients that we can create in Photoshop. In this particular case, I was creating a linear gradient, which gives us a straight transition from one color to another, as you see here. But with this gradient fill layer selected that was created when I went and clicked and dragged out on my canvas, I can now go up to the options bar while my gradient tool is still active and I can choose between these different types of gradients here. In this case, you can see I have the linear gradient active, but if I click on the radial gradient, for example, now my gradient will change to a circle transition rather than a linear straight one. The same thing applies for these other options here, giving you a few different gradient types depending on your mood but for most of your projects, you'll likely only be using the linear or the radial gradient options. So now with these basics out of the way, we need to go and address the next most important thing about the gradient tool to understand, which is the difference between the two gradient modes. As I mentioned earlier, we have two different gradient modes. We have the gradient mode and the classic gradient mode. In the gradient mode that I was just demonstrating with, you could see that we could actively adjust all of the settings related to our gradient, even after it was applied onto our canvas. With the classic gradient, however, this is a little bit different. I'll click on the classic gradient mode to enable it, and you'll notice that there are a few other settings that are now active. In this case, I'll go and choose a black to white gradient for the sake of example, and then I'll go and turn off my gradient fill layer that I created previously. I'll now go and click the new layer icon to create a new layer for this gradient to be applied to. Because unlike the gradient mode, the classic gradient mode will apply a gradient to whatever active layer is active in your layers panel, which in this case is that transparent layer. Now when I click and drag out. Just like before, I have a defined starting point, but this time represented by that blue circle, and the end point is wherever my cursor ends up. Once I let go, like so, this will apply that gradient with my current settings, including the gradient type, at the time that I created the gradient. If I go and adjust these settings in any way, including adjusting the color by clicking the drop down menu, and let's go and choose that blue color again, you notice that nothing actually happens. So therefore, I cannot update this gradient once it is created. I would have to go and change my settings accordingly, and then go and create a new gradient with those new settings. So that's the primary difference between the classic gradient and the regular gradient mode. The classic gradient mode is 
best when you're working with layer masks because it allows you to apply multiple gradient adjustments to a single layer over and over again. Meanwhile, the regular gradient mode is going to be more useful when you want to have a gradient background, use gradient fill layers, or you want more control with the live view gradient as you saw previously. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna focus specifically on the new settings available within the regular gradient mode, but if you wanna learn more of the legacy settings, you can check out this video right here for my older video about the gradient tool in Photoshop, which covers everything you need to know about the classic gradient. So, so far you understand how we can go and update the colors of our gradients after we have created them within the gradient mode. We know how to change the type of gradient we are using, but there are a couple other settings left, including the reverse and dither options. The reverse will simply switch the colors in your gradient from left to right and right to left. The dither option, however, is going to be important and I would recommend that you leave this enabled at all times. The reason for that is dither will allow you to smooth the transition between your gradient so you don't get this blocky banding look. It's really hard to tell the difference of it on my screen right now, but I'll put a photo up here to better illustrate the difference between having dither enabled and disabled while you're using the gradient tool. So for the most part, I would recommend leaving dither enabled at all times. From there we have the method which will change how our colors are blended into our image and I'd recommend you just leave this set to perceptual for the best results in most cases. Now these basic settings will only get you so far because what if you want to go and change your gradient colors or add additional colors for example? Well that's where we can go and use the properties panel in this particular case which is new to the gradient tool. Clicking on the properties panel while our gradient fill layer is created that we created with the gradient mode previously we now have a bunch of different settings that we can choose from including accessing the legacy gradient editor that you might be used to from previous versions of Photoshop. To access the legacy gradient options, we simply need to double click on the thumbnail of our gradient fill layer and then double click on our gradient preview like so. This will now open up the previous gradient editor that you might be familiar with and that's exactly what I cover in my last video that again you can find right here if you're interested. But all of these settings are now a little bit more streamlined inside of our properties panel where we can go ahead and change the style of our gradient. We can go and change the colors using the presets. We can adjust the angle of our particular gradient to change the transition angle. We can also adjust the scale to change how drastic the difference is between our start and end point of our gradient. But most importantly, what we can go and adjust is our colors and opacity options. If you wanna go and update a color in your gradient, you can simply double click on the color swatch within the properties panel of your gradient preview right here. So double clicking on that color swatch will open up a color picker where I can now go and change this to a new color like so. Alternatively, you can also double click on the live preview color stop by double clicking there to reaccess the color picker without using the properties panel. So this will just save you a little bit of time. If you want to go and add an additional color to your gradient, you can go and hover your cursor below this gradient preview to create a new color stop as you see here. This will also create a new color stop on your live gradient, which you can double click on just like before, and then go and adjust the color as needed to whatever you would like for your gradient. When you add additional color stops, just remember that you will also have multiple midpoints to define the transition area between your first color and the next color within your gradient. So in this case, the gradient midpoint here is going to adjust the transition between this blue color and our middle orangey red color. Now the final adjustment that we have to use is our opacity controls, which allow you to go and change the visibility of different areas of your gradient. These different controls represent both ends of your gradient. So of course this control here will represent the left side of your gradient and so on on the right. If we click on our opacity control within the properties panel and scroll down to the opacity option, we can now go and adjust the transparency of that particular area within our gradient. As you can see here, it's just making the color more white because of our white background, but if I turn that background off, you can see that we now have that transparency visible on our canvas. If you want it to be more selective with how your opacity is affecting your gradient, you can go and add different opacity stops just like we did with the color. So for example, I'll click right in the middle here to add a new opacity stop, and with that opacity stop selected, 
I can go and adjust the opacity here, which will adjust the opacity of that specific area within the gradient, which in this case is that middle red color. Now with all that said, just to tie this back to the legacy gradient editor, I'll double click on my gradient fill layer thumbnail and then click on my gradient preview here to access the gradient editor. All of the settings that we just discussed that are now available within the properties panel are also available within the gradient editor. It just looks a little bit different. All of our color stops are along the bottom of our gradient preview, while all of the opacity stops are along the top of our gradient preview. As you can see here, we have the middle opacity stop set to 68%, or I could click on this middle color, click on the color swatch, and then go and change the color of that area within my gradient accordingly. So although some of these settings might feel a little bit different, at the end of the day, they actually are exactly the same between the gradient editor and the properties panel. They are just laid out in a little bit of a different way. Now I know that might feel like a lot to remember, but that's exactly why I created a free PDF cheat sheet for this lesson summarizing all the tips that you learned here. To grab your copy, just click the link in the description below, type in your name and email, and you'll get instant access to the PDF. You'll also get first dibs on all my future PDF cheat sheets created for my videos. So if you love Photoshop, but hate remembering all the endless steps, these guides are going to be a ton of help. But anyways, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button to let me know you enjoyed this video. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time.